This is extremely disheartening. Councils warn of an end to free school meals during the holidays due to funding cut. We're going to read into this more from our news, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Lee here with an article from iNews with the headline that councils warn of an end to free school meals during the holidays due to funding cuts. Local authority leaders have said that it's heartbreaking to see the household support fund end as the fund funding is still vital to families who might otherwise go without food. Um, <clears throat> guys, while you're here, before I give my thoughts, make sure you hit the like button and share across social media so other people are aware of this video. So... As we are fully aware, we are in a cost of living crisis. We have many, many people up and down the in England in particular who are struggling to make ends meet, um, struggling to struggling to pay bills, cost uh, struggling to pay lots of things, just the basic essential needs. People out there are just struggling just to initially survive. And this here, when we have a lot of kids who are already not getting enough meals. And their mums and dads, mummies and daddies are not even able to feed themselves. And we're talking about cutting the funding for them, uh, for, for, for these children, the next generation, the next future. That's what we're talking about. And I want to be very, very clear here. Now, obviously, I've not read this and we're going to read this together. But I want to I try and trying to put myself in the shoes of the councils here. I generally do not believe the councils want to do this. I believe that the councils have been kicking and screaming for the Conservative government to provide more funding. Now, we talked about in a video last week about um, about um, Michael Gove had said that he secured more funding for councils to stop them going bankrupt, but it was nowhere near the amount of money that is required to help some of these councils, and they still need to make up the deficits. And this is one of the ways for them to, to help make up the deficits, um, because... The most basic of services needs to run by the councils. And as inhumane as this is, this is not a basic public service. I know it's it's outrageous and it's immoral. Um, but what are the councils supposed to do is, is my question to you. And it's easy for us to say, well, they need to keep going. They need to keep these things going. But they don't have the money. They just don't have the money. Because the government just won't give them the money. I mean, obviously, when we need a war, when we need to build uh, another another ship and uh, and build more we more weapons, you know, we we've got the money for that. But you know, obviously, we don't have the money for feeding kids out there. You know, we, we really don't have the money to feed feed kids out there, um, out there, guys. No, 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 no. Military budget that 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 comes first. You know, the military really comes first, guys. Yeah. You can uh, as much as I want to kick and scream and swear. It's just uh, terrible, terrible circumstances that we are in. We are so, so desperately need something different in, in government. We really do. These conservatives, they don't care about me. They don't care about you. And all they care about is how much money is in their bank account. Councils have warned free school meals during the holidays will likely be withdrawn as hundreds of thousands of pupils after Easter due, due to the end of the government funding. Local authorities and charities are urging the government to extend its household support fund, the HAF scheme, which was first introduced in autumn 2021 and distributed among councils to help those in need during the cost of living crisis. Originally set to last until spring 2022, the scheme has been extended three times, taking the total amount of funding to $2.5 billion, while England was given a further $842 billion on the 1st of April 2023 in order to support, support those in need. <coughs> Excuse me. So funding was supplied by the government to help keep these going, you know, or, um, but they're, take, they're ending that funding after Easter. Why would they end the funding after Easter? What is the reason for this? I'm sure they will come up with a spokesperson an excuse to say that they've invested this amount of money to councils to help them with it, blah, blah, blah. Those kind of lines that we always read. Um, 2.5 billion. I'm sure they can find 2.5 billion somewhere. I mean, we, we can find if we can find 37 billion for a test and trace system that didn't work. I mean, um, surely we can find 2.5 billion somewhere. Oh, we could we could tax the tax the rich as well. 
that could be one that we've been kicking and screaming about for a long time as well. <clears throat> another argument that people have made is about, well, people should just get another job or work longer hours. And it's it's so, so easy for someone to say that, especially when they're, they're not living on down the poverty line. That they're living in a middle income and they're able to afford Netflix or <clears throat> they're able to still get uh, some luxuries in their life. Uh, it's about those in the lower end who are just surviving, surviving, not not living, surviving, trying to make every single, trying to get past every single day. And that and that and these kids do not have a hope in the future if they're not getting at least that meal every and they, a meal every single day. They need these meals. It's vital for them. It's vital for their nutrition and it's vital for their future. <sighs> and I'm going to keep banging it till the cows come home, guys. The fund, however, was not mentioned in the autumn statement and is now due to come to an end on the 31st of March. Now, that could very well change if the bud with the budget um, in the budget st in the next budget statement that the chancellor could come up. He could introduce it. He could. I don't. There's no suggestion that I've seen at the, at the time of this recording. There's no suggestion that he is going to, but that could change, of course. The scheme, which has been used by councils to fund free school meal vouchers during the holidays, which has become a lifeline for low-income families during and since the pandemic, and has taken out much of the money local authorities received through the scheme. Beg Crave, the leader of Manchester City Council, told the I that it's heartbreaking to think that her local authority will no longer no longer be able to fund the free school meal vouchers and other cost of living support, where the fund comes to an end. <coughs> We're a city that historic levels of poverty and deprivation often overlooks, uh, she said. Over 43% of our kids are growing up in poverty. 43%! This is just one city, guys. One city, and over 43% of these kids are growing up in poverty. Council analysts have shown that 20% of Manchester residents have a disposable income of less than £30 a month after rent, food and bills. Last year alone, the, the city spent over £15 million advocating poverty and dealing with the cost of living crisis, she said, adding that the council has been assisted this year by household support funds grant of £12.9 million. <clears throat> See, all this, guys, and this is just Manchester. And we're not even, look, we're not even talking about you know, the rural areas, the ones where people don't have many jobs or uh, as well, you know, where there's not a lot of jobs and there's not a lot of work. And as we know, the pay is just nowhere near, it, it, nowhere near in line with, with inflation. Uh, the gap between the, 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 the gap is just huge. Uh, even with the upcoming increase in minimum wage that's coming, that's not going to make the that's not going to make a difference. It's a welcome difference, but it's not going to make enough enough for people. It really, really is not. <clears throat> Akira Craig said that this enabled the councils to help 60,000 people, including 40,000 children, receive free school meal vouchers outside of term time. With 12,500 vulnerable households getting cost of living support payments, 6,000 children benefiting from a holiday activity fund, and 400 care leavers are assessing a boost to their income. So for a city like us, losing out on the HSF, it really is a problem. The 60,000 people that we're able to support in addition to all the work that we're doing around the poverty stops overnight. We're seeing vulnerable families who have had a bit of money tucked aside for a rainy day and have spent the rainy day money, she added. She added that the Manchester City Council can't just step in as a budget black hole of 50 billion. It has had to plug, uh, Craig has said. <clears throat> I would love to step into this space and fill the gap, but there just isn't that resilience left. It's horrible because the reason the local councils are so close to communications and that the reason we do what we do is to make people's lives better. When you hear some of the stories of families where parents aren't eating, where kids are just going to schools with shoes in disrepair, with teachers stepping in and buying kids not just pencils and pencil cases but jackets and lunches, it's heartbreaking. How are you supposed to incentivize kids for the future? When you read things like this, when kids are kids don't understand the world that they live in. And when they are in a world where everything is going wrong for them, where is the hope? Where is the aspiration? Where is the desire for them to be successful in life when everything around them is deprived? When their parents are deprived? 
<clears throat> when they are relying on the school and the teachers to give them things. Where is that that passion and inspiration for the children? Where is it? You tell me where it is. How 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 are we supposed to build a better and brighter future for 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 those in England, <clears throat> for these next kids, these so-called next generations? How are we supposed to build that for them? Manchester City Council is calling for a year-long extension to HSF, considering that economic forecasts suggest that the situation may have improved slightly, but this time next year it's obvious there will be a long-term discussion and it should be mainstreamed into budgets. <coughs> My hope is that if Labour come into power at the next general election, they will guarantee, I'm pretty sure they're going to guarantee, I think free school meals are going to be across the board. We know that Sadiq Khan is making sure that every single child in London is getting a free school meal. But we're talking about London, the city, the capital, where they have a lot of money behind them. <clears throat> and it's easy to say, well, why not the rest of uh, mayors across across England do the same? Well, if, excuse me. Well, if they don't have the money, how, what are they supposed to do is, is an argument that I make to people. And it's, that's, that's the thing that really infuriates me. Bella Sancti, the leader of Brighton and Hove City Council, which together with councils in Plymouth, Lambeth, Bristol and Southampton have written to the government to stress the importance of, H of the HFF <coughs> and told the eye that she had been hor horrified by what she has seen and heard in the local food banks. Demand is now out of control, completely outstripping supply, like nothing that has ever been experienced before, she said. The amount of discretionary food vouchers which we would previously give out over the course of the year during COVID now goes out the door in one month. The concern is that people are clearly going without food, she said, <coughs> adding that the situation could potentially have an impact on school attendance. As she has heard from one parent who was terrified about her child going to secondary school and needed to find the money to pay for their bus fare. These sorts of calculations and decisions are, have, are people having to make. Just those tiny little things, like literally, literally every single penny for these people count every single tiny little penny you know you sometimes think about the jar like some people have a have jars of pennies and whatnot like they don't even have that they don't even have that like they'll be lucky to find a penny on the floor for them that that's how every single uh, bit counts and it's just it's it's horrible Kajara Sankly uh, said around some weeks of councils have seen up to 50 families present as homeless and astronomical figure. But that's with the household support fund being in place, with us being able to provide emergency support to people who are in crisis. So if you pull that rug out, I can't fathom how we're going to get by as a city. She said that Brighton has had to make £33 million of savings this year, the largest amount it has ever had to make, so there is no wiggle room, which would enable it to, to continue... Um, schemes linked to the Household Support Fund. She called the Household Support Fund to be extended by at least a year and for there to be a proper long-term plan for government beyond the sticking plaster of an emergency cost of living support. Graham Whitam, the CEO of Greater to Manchester Poverty Action, told the I that the Household Support Fund had been really important, adding that free school meals during the holiday councils had been, have been able to provide and help build a safety net for families. The other side of is that it is that councils themselves are cash strapped and don't have a significant ring fence funding their welfare provision. So this has been a massive, a massacre. It's enabled councils to stand up to responses to needs as as they wouldn't have been able to do so and created some space for in, in innovation as well, Mr Whitman had said. He said that he believes historically the government has washed its hands of local welfare provision, but that the Household Support Fund helped it to understand the value of the role that local authorities have. Mr. Wildham sees the ending of the funding as a big cliff edge because the cost of living support payments that the government ends in March as well and call for permanent ring fence funding for local welfare provision by councils. Linton Perry, MBE of the Chief Executive of Barnard Dose, has said across the UK families are struggling to pay their rents and feed their children, often borrowing money and taking on debts just to get through enough a week. It's vital to that to that fund continues. The fund ends in March 2024, so time is running out. Without renewal, we will leave a major hole in our crisis support groups. <clears throat> the Leeds City Council Executive Member for Communities, Mary Harlan, told the I that the situation is looking pretty grim and without the Household Support Fund, adding that despite an ec economically vibrant city, we still have something like 22% of our population living in poverty, including 35,000 or one in five children. 
The household support fund has helped uh, helped Leeds boost what is offered through its welfare support scheme, which provides food and fuel vouchers, white goods and help with building maintenance, she said, adding that is a vital scheme. Gispel, an organisation which worked with vulnerable young people across the city, told the city, told the council that it had been able to top up its gas meter of a family living in one of those most deprived areas of the city who have not had their heating for several weeks and those children have been off school with colds and other illnesses. See, this is the thing as well when you are in a cost of living crisis here. Kids are not able to go to school, which means they're missing out on their education because they're not well. And because they're not well, they're not able to go to the doctors because our NHS is overwhelmed. So they're not able to do that. And they can't go private because they have no money. And they're not getting enough. They're, they've already struggled. So they're not, because they're not able to go to food, uh, go to go to school. So they're not even able to get that free school meal. So they, so there, there may be situations, obviously, where kids are literally turning up to school absolutely sick, unwell, because they're living in cold, living in cold, damp homes just to be able to get a meal. That's how that's how that's how desperate it is for people. Council has passed a white paper motion this month calling for household support fund to be extended, and Control Harlot stressed that no, that the longer funding plan needs to be outlined as being able to budget uh, and know what's coming and what you can spend it on. Brilliant. Uh, okay, yeah, everyone else is continuing that. I'm not going to read the whole lot. I'm just going to see if the council what they've said. The Department of Working Pensions has been contacted for comment. So they still haven't they haven't responded to this. When when was this issued? This was issued the twenty uh, eighth of January, twenty twenty four, which is today, which is when I'm recording this. So all this, and they haven't responded to it. I'll leave the article in the description if you want to read the rest, guys. What's the what 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 what? So what's my faults? Well, I think you already know my faults, guys. Before I even say it, um, it's a disgrace. Um, our gener our kids, we're losing a generation of children as a result of this, um, and nobody likes nobody likes it being being told and, and having it banged into their ears, you know. Uh, and I I just I feel for these councils and these organisations who are trying desperately in everything to keep people afloat. They are desperately trying to keep people afloat because the government just do not care whatsoever about this. They do not care about the well-being of people. They really, really don't. They're only caring about culture wars and looking elsewhere. And it's it's just absolutely dis disgusting of this government. I, 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 I really don't know what to say, except I just hope that they extend it. I really, really hope they extend it. Um, and if they don't, it's just going to mean more people more people, more organisations are going to be digging in their own pockets to try and keep people afloat. So There's going to be so many GoFundMes and fundraisers and whatnot to try and keep people afloat. The, the, the desperation out of food banks is astonishing as well. The amount of people queuing uh, desperately to try and get something out of food banks as well. It's really heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking. And there appears to be no solution whatsoever from the government, or at least turning a blind eye to it. So what do you guys make of this story? The very fact that councils may have to uh, uh, warn of the end of free school meals, that the funding won't be there. What should they do? What can they do? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. If you found this video informative and helpful please hit the like button and share this across social media so other people are aware of it and if you can subscribe because it really does help support the channel and rather than financially support me if you want to financially support any of these organizations it's, it's a very not that hard to look here guys go and support them but if you want to support uh, the work that i do here you can join youtube membership for as little as 99p or patreon but they are there if you want to so thank you very much for watching and i hope to catch you all very, very soon.